Well, welcome. Glad you're glad you're here with us. So Helen mentioned that that uh, you're building panels and that you found. Uh, it was a neighbor, I guess, who first inspired you, right? Yeah, it's a uh, friend, John Prusia. We call him our mad scientist. In the good uh, Appalachian tradition of MacGyver, John found, uh, donated shower doors and made 32 of his own panels wow. and was the first person in our county to use net metering and spin his meter backwards. Wow. And so you're helping neighbors and you're making something really meaningful. And, uh, and I'm assuming you're, you've moved beyond shower doors for the, for the panels themselves. Yeah, we got a small grant from the YouthWorks Foundation and we bought actual aluminum tubing and solar glass. Oh, cool. And so the panels we do produce uh, look beautiful. Yeah. And, and tell us a little bit more about your hometown. The community I live in is Chestnut Ridge. It's about 400 families. And uh, our town of Philippi is 3,500 people. Yeah. Uh, and our county has about 15,000. So we're kind of off the interstate. Uh, you, you have to want to get there. Uh, right. It's a community where people have done a lot for a long time with a little, and they would right. almost do anything with nothing. Is it cold country where you are? It is. Uh, we're the right in the center of it. Yeah. And... Uh, our community was a coal mine, operating coal mine. Uh, when the acid rain legislation hit in 1980, the unemployment rate in our county went from 8% to 26%. Wow. And uh, so we've continued to try and find employable skills for people. Well, this also adds a little, a little poignancy to the idea that you can make power you know, yourselves making, you know, using panels that your, your community is making. That's kind of interesting. It's true empowerment. Making your own electricity is a wonderful gift. All of a sudden, you're on a volunteer trip, and you're in Africa. How did, how did, what, was, what was that experience well, like? Well, I'm a community church pastor, and we had a, a woman in our community whose husband died of cancer, and she wanted to find something to do with the rest of her life, and she wanted to go and serve in Africa. And so we went, and when I, we left, we asked John to make a light. You know, kind of, John, can you make something that she can take? And sure enough, uh, we began a journey of learning about the 1.3 billion people in the world that live every night in darkness. We uh, just started the journey of our organization trying to help our own neighbors, but all of a sudden we realized we had something that we could contribute to the well-being of the whole world. And obviously, if these communities are, are without electricity and these families don't have lights, um, they're obviously they're limited by the, you know, the natural hours of the day. Absolutely. The average child will study and read about two hours more every night if they actually have a light. Um, right now, people are using kerosene or a candle or some kind of fire, and uh, it's the equivalent of smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, and wow. all of us would realize it's probably not good to smoke two packs of cigarettes a day. Yeah, especially for kids. Especially yeah. doing your homework. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we also learned by asking people in Kenya to tell us stories of what happened to them without a light. And I guess the thing that kind of hooked me was finally one mother who shared that she laid down her babies to bed one night and there was a uh, black mambo snake in the house that she didn't see. Snakes travel at the nighttime and if you have a little night light in the house, uh, snakes stay away. Yeah. And her, she lost her babies. And she, she just said, I would still have my babies if I only had a light. Right. And so that's just an extreme case, wow. but it's just an example of what right. light can do. Well, tell us about these lights that you're bringing to these communities. So is this something you have in your hand right now? It is. It's yeah. something I have in your hand. And uh, yeah. again, um, they're made up of some basic units. There's a solar panel. A small 10-watt panel is really all a family needs to make enough power to charge a battery. Uh, the lights are made out of LED strips. And then the wonderful thing was we got a gift from the 3M Corporation of mirrored reflective paper that's the shiniest paper that's made on the earth. And we uh, found something to stick it to. And uh, we use recycled political signs. So, uh, <laughs> Finally, <laughs> a use, a use, <laughs> political signs. Democrats and Republicans are lighting the world together. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. Can we can we dim the stage lights just for a second to see what this is like? Turn the stage lights down. Look at there. It's about a thousand lumens, and it'll light a family's home every night. Wow! Wow! <laughs> so we designed the light as a kit, so that it can be fabricated in any village. So not just are we giving lights to people in communities; we're actually giving them a kit, showing them how to assemble it, how to maintain it. If you make something, you also know how to repair it. Yeah. 
And so you must have a lot of help making them and volunteers, I suspect, who are helping you put these, these kits together for distribution. Absolutely. Our, uh, our whole initiative, we have three uh, kind of staff people and the rest are all volunteers. We have about 1,000 uh, people. 700 of them are youth uh, from different parts of the country. And we currently have lights in 31 different countries. 31 different countries. Wow. And so... Yeah. So here you are, you're a Christian minister, you're from West Virginia, and you're in Boulder, Colorado, and you're as much of a renewable energy hippie as anybody in our neighborhood, <laughs> basically. It's great. This used to be a church, and you guys got yeah. solar panels. So anyway, yeah. this, uh, <laughs> you feel really like it's a great uh, let the message go out. It's great. Well, it is, it is interesting to me because I think there is, and I don't understand it, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but there has been this sense that that conservatives are not environmentalists or they're not pro-renewable energy. And I, I don't understand the rationale because I know conservatives uh, love their kids and, you know, or have right. compassion and, right. you know, I don't get it. Right. Well, it's interesting. All the major religions of the world go back to the beginning of we're supposed to steward the earth. Yeah. And so I think that's the big debate is what does good stewardship look like? Yeah. But you also recognize that that the dogma also doesn't have a doesn't belong there. It's it just about helping people. Well, it is, and the scripture teaches us the best way to overcome evil is to do good. And so we, as a community, we're just trying to figure out what good could we do for the world. And it'll be five years yeah. this September we get to celebrate, uh, and we're hoping to have our 2,000th light go into the world. Oh wow! Is there an opportunity you think for the West Virginia economy to embrace this technology or this concept so that? You know, as coal jobs are basically, right. you know, they've, they've uh, diminished probably tenfold in the last 30 years or so. That what, what, West, what West Virginia used to really rely on was this coal economy, and it's, sure. you know, a fraction of its former strength, right? Yeah, the number of jobs in the coal industry are way down. The amount of coal that we still use as a nation is still at the same level it always is. Right. We as people are pretty committed to using energy and more energy. But West Virginia is an energy producing state. And so the wonderful thing is we're now finding ways to use new energy uh, to continue to export stuff now all the way around the world. Yeah. And so our hope is that it'll be fully embraced within our own country and the dialogue won't be so adversarial between one being a winner and the other being a loser. Yeah, that is great. I love hearing you say that. That's a big, big deal. Hey, how many lights do you think you've given away and how many people have benefited from the work? Well, we have about 8,000 people, we believe, go to bed at night uh, actually having the opportunity to enjoy a few of their nighttime hours. And that gives us a little bit of satisfaction that saving a life and doing good in the world is a wonderful way to spend your life. Yeah, no, this is, this is really inspiring. And it's really, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a critical issue that you're addressing and you did it just in your community. It's a local solution to a global problem. Absolutely. And it's growing, but you're also cutting through all of the, all of the sort of, uh, you know, bureaucratic or ideological boundaries that keep people from being able to implement things like this worldwide. Rustin, what's the name of the organization that's now doing all this stuff? It's New Vision Renewable Energy, and uh, we have a website that provides most of the information yeah. about what we're doing. What's the URL? What's the website? It's nvre.org. New NVRE. Vision. NVRE. NewVisionRenewableEnergy.org. Yeah, and if you can't, if you can't, if you're not near a pen or pencil, you can just go to Etown and we'll help you find it. Great story, Rustin. Thanks for sharing it. Congratulations, the winner of this week's Achievement Award, Rustin Seaman from West Virginia, founder of New Vision Renewable Energy, bringing light to communities in need worldwide, bringing a renewable energy economy to West Virginia, spreading that good work and that good conversation. Congratulations, Rustin. <laughs>